Hey guys, Jeff Trexley here. Um, I wanted to do a quick little video for you guys to show you how I start a piece of work. I've had a few people ask me, how do you do an underpainting? So I'm going to just take a minute and show you guys how I start my underpaintings. Now there's a million different ways you can do an underpainting. Uh, some people get more detail than others. It's, it's just what you're comfortable with. I don't go into too much detail. Um, I don't always find it necessary to. But um, the first thing I like to do is I use a medium called Liquin. And Liquin's a really good uh, medium to use. It's, comes, it's pretty inexpensive. It comes in these large bottles. And um, it really helps with your paint flow. It really loosens the paint. It um, allows you to, to spread it on the canvas uh, evenly. And it also dries very quick. So it's, it's a really good medium to use for this. Um, you don't want your underpainting staying wet that long. Um, this scene here is the 14th Indiana Regiment at the Battle of Gettysburg, uh, 1863, uh, second day on Cemetery Hill. And uh, what I'm going to do is go ahead and, and show you how I start my underpaintings, and uh, I'll walk you through it. All right, guys, the first thing I'm going to do is lay in an overall tone on the entire canvas. Um, and I like to use a burnt umber. Most of the time, this is what I'll be using. Um, it's a warm brown. It helps create the warmth in the painting, and I feel like when you do an underpainting, it really helps, you know, keep the colors and the of the painting all together and in, in, in harmony. Um, and it makes it a little bit easier because I use a brown palette. So when I judge my colors on the canvas, I'm looking at brown, and it's the same as my brown palette. So I'm not looking at stark white. So here we go. We'll just lay in a nice little brown color here. And you just want to work it from top to bottom. Don't have to go too dark. Keep it light. Keep it loose. Cover that entire canvas. That's basically what you're looking to do is cover that entire canvas. Get rid of that nasty white. And like I said, I don't always go detailed. Um, when I was first starting out, I used to go really detailed with underpaintings. Uh, I really used to block in where all the highlights were going to be, and after some time I found, like, I found that I was just painting over that anyway, so, I mean, it helped in the beginning, but once I started to do more and more, I found that wasn't as necessary to do. Now this scene here is going to be a night scene, so usually when I go in and do this, I'll use a, a paper towel or you know even my finger sometimes and I'll just brush out the highlights but we'll get to that in a little bit. I usually wipe out the sky as well but for this one I think I'm going to leave it dark because it's going to be a dark sky. I like to work it into the canvas though. And underneath of this, what I did, guys, is I transferred a drawing So after I, I did the drawing, um, based off of photos, I'll I'll trace my initial drawing, my initial sketch that I did, and I'll just find the hard lines. I won't really, you know, trace every little line that goes in there. Um, so I'll just find the edges of my drawing and I'll trace that, and that'll allow me to transfer that to the canvas. And then once my drawing's transferred to the canvas, you know, my line drawing, I'll spray it with a with like a fixative. And that'll keep that pencil underneath for you guys so you won't lose it. If you lose it a little bit, it's no big deal. I mean, you're going to paint over it anyway. So. Alright. Simple enough, right? Pin it out, get it as smooth as you can. 
All right, and we'll let that dry for a few minutes. We'll come back and we'll add some shadows to it. All right, what I'm doing now, guys, is I'm going to be blocking in, and you can see I got started a little bit, some of these darker shadow areas. And, you know, I always found it easier, and it's something I learned in school, to, um, to always start with your darks, your, find your darkest darks, and work into your lightest lights. So, again, I'm being real rough here. I'm, I'm not worried about detail or anything like that. I'm just trying to block in an overall feel, you know, where some of these shadows are going to go. And this flag is going to be very dark because um, it's almost in shadow here. So I'm blocking that in. And like I said, it's always easier to go from darks to lights. Um, the thinnest part of your paint should always be, you know, the background. And, I, and I'm blocking in some trees back here as well. This is going to be a real distant trees back here in, in the in the background. But your darkest dark should always be um, really light with medium. You want them really thin, I should say. And your, your opaque colors should always be your highlights. That way it builds a three-dimensional look to your figures. So I'm just going through here, finding where some of these shadows are going to fall into place. And always locate, you know, where your light source is coming from. It's really important. Um, now my light source is going to be coming this direction from the flashes of the muggles. So the shadows on these figures are going to be coming back this way. So the sun set behind them, but since it's completely dark, the only light source is going to be these barrels firing. So it's going to create these shadows. I'm using a really big brush here. I'm not even worried about this detail. You know, I'll go back in in a little bit. And work some of that in. I'm just finding that there's, there's light sources and there's shadows. going to be our central figure here. This is the focal point of the painting. So he's probably going to have the strongest contrast on him. That way he pops and your eye goes to him. Composition is a big thing in paintings and it's something you learn in the beginning. Um, you know, I don't you know, think I'm perfect at it or anything like that. Um, like I said, we're always learning and always getting better. But I try to always pay attention to where my composition is going to be, how, how it falls. I'm going to have some artillery pieces back here. So, our, so you'll do tricks to, uh, to lead the viewer's eye you know, to your central figure. Now this guy is pretty much the highest figure. I mean, this guy comes close, but he's pretty much the highest figure in the scene. He's a little off center. You don't really want anything right in the middle of the painting. So he's a little to the left. Oh, he's holding the flag, which will also draw your eye to him. But also I try to use little tricks, like I'll you know, have this guy who's leaning into this guy whose barrel's pointing you up in that direction. So little things that you might not think about will help flow your eye around the canvas you know the way the artist intends you to or hopefully so and over here you sort of have a diagonal boom 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 leading this way almost create a next sort of feel
So I'm not worried about any of the detail, any of the little things. It's all going to get painted in later. This is the this is the uh, the easy stuff. This is uh, the loose stuff. And just finding out where things are at. And then, you know, you can come back in a smaller brush, and I mean, you can get as detailed as you want, you know. A strong light and shadow on this figure. I lost a little bit of his hat in here, so I'm going to go back and draw it in. There's Kepi. I'll use a liner brush for that. Just so I don't completely lose it. And don't stress, guys. If your if your underpainter doesn't look, you know, perfect, it's it's not a big deal. I mean, it's really not. You can always go back in. The beauty of oils is you can always go back in and fix it. You know, let it dry, and then you can go in and, and fix it the way you want it. So there's a little dark under his neck here. Get too caught up in the details there. A lot of this is out of my head. You know where these shadows are gonna fall. I shot these figures in the sunlight, so I can't go off with photos really. I mean, I can a little bit because the light source is the same direction, but for a nighttime scene, it's gonna look a lot different. But it's a starting point. If you guys have any other questions you want to ask me, you know, let me know, and you know, maybe we can do some more videos. Hopefully, in the future, some different things I can show you. You know, the progress and further along in a painting, not just the real rough underpainting that I'm doing here. These are going to be really far off trees back here, leading into this field. We have a lot of smoke and real dark sky in this, so.
Now with your paper towel, if you want, you can come back in. Just take out some of those darks again. <clears throat> but I like to keep the underpainting pretty loose. It's just a guide. I really had a good time with these models up in Gettysburg. A few local. And you guys are the best that helped me out and you know all the reenactors in general. I couldn't do it without you guys. I appreciate it. I think we'll stop it here for now. I'm going to go in and add some detail into these figures, but uh, that just gives you an idea of how I start it and what I do. Like I said, it's real rough. Don't go crazy with the details. There's plenty of time for that later. And just have fun with it, guys. Alright.